What's up, guys? Welcome back to Tidal Gardens. It's been a hot minute since we've done an update on the corals in this tank, or even heard my voice for that matter. So, for anyone who is new here and wondering who is this person and where Than's ASMR voice is, my name is Becca. I am the media executive here at Tidal Gardens. I started this mixed reef a little over two years ago because I had never actually kept a saltwater tank before working here, and Than wanted me to get some experience in the hobby, as well as giving the audience some beginner perspectives on this channel. Anyway, at the two-year mark, I'm really happy with how my tank is doing. I ran into a couple of struggles early on, but for the most part, things have gone really well. I've got some new fish and corals, but before we get into the new additions, let's take a look at some of the corals that were added at the very beginning. So starting off, let's take a look at my little frog spawn grove down at the bottom here that was home to my clownfish. On first glance, it looks like it has filled out nicely, but that's pretty deceiving. It's not just filling out, it is thriving. The guys have been secretly harvesting heads off this colony for months now, and if I had to guess, this frog spawn would be at least four times the size if it was left alone. This is a little Tidal Gardens Easter egg for you, but if you ordered some pink tip frog spawn from our website in the past year or so, you could easily have gotten some Becca tank race frog spawn. Even now, I think much of what we put up for sale comes from the stock from this tank. But don't worry, we are leaving more than enough for the clownfish in this tank. I'm not sure if he has morphed into a she yet, as clownfish are known to do when there isn't a female already in the tank. It's hard to tell since this one is always hiding. Also, his, <clears throat> her, temperament has chilled way down. R.I.P. to the female that used to be in here, but before, the pair was murderous and would bite any hand that entered the tank. Now, this remaining clownfish is a model peaceful citizen. Next up, this Blastomusa merletti colony. If you can believe it or not, this is the largest one that we have on the entire coral farm. I grew it here from just a few polyps, and even though the farm side had some issues with Blastomusa, this little colony of blue ravens has chugged along and is now a nice little display piece on its own. I know the guys were eyeing it for propagation, but I'm really glad they left it alone to grow out. It is super healthy and fluffy. All right, next thing on this list, the SPS corals, which if you have been here from the beginning, notoriously have not done well in my tank. My SPS in general now have been doing really well. This freak hair pavona, for example, has had some insane growth recently, and I'm super happy about it because this coral is hands down one of my favorite SPS corals in this tank. My Acropora aren't dying either, which is a huge shock to me specifically. I don't know what I did, but they seem to be happy now. They're actually getting some nice growth coupled with really awesome polyp extension. I'm super excited to see how this one Acropora crust looks in the future now that it's started to get little nubs of upward branching growth popping in. I think that it will look great in this open area of the tank. I think going from a rimless tank to a Eurobrace tank helped these Acros quite a bit because I no longer cover this tank and a lot more light is getting in. It was bonkers how much light the egg crate was blocking. Now, another piece of SPS that's been making me laugh is this rainbow stylo. Its growth rate has picked up quite a bit since originally putting it in the tank, but it wants to grow anywhere but up. It just branches outwards, and it's so goofy to look at. Now moving on to LPS, more corals that are doing well are both of my chalice corals. My Raja Rampage is huge, and I love it. And then my Cloudberry's Chalice is also getting really big. I mean, look at how small it was just in January. You may have noticed this white streaking going on with the Cloudberry's Chalice. We are currently unaware of what is actually causing it. Originally, it started as a little spot and we just assumed something fell on it and that spot was just damaged a bit. But as the Chalice grew, the spot got bigger and it started like streaking out from that spot. And this isn't just a my frag problem. We've had this issue with other Cloudberries frags as well, and I've heard from other coral sellers that they experience the same streaking in theirs as well. So it's very bizarre, but clearly isn't impacting the health of the coral because it's growing very well. In a way, it's actually kind of cool. 
I also recently added a new golden eye chalice. Because the other two were doing so well, I felt like the chalices were great corals to start collecting in this beginner tank, so hopefully this chalice also does well. Since the last video way back when, my tank has really settled in and has unexpectedly become a haven for some, quote, rescue fish and corals. First thing that you may notice is this new yellow tang swimming around. Now, before you say anything, no, that's not a bacterial infection. Those are just battle scars. <laughs> Originally, this guy was part of our tang gang in the SPS show tank. Everything was going fine the year or so he was in there until it suddenly um, wasn't. If you've ever had tangs before, I'm sure you already know that they have a tendency to be huge jerks. And sometimes it doesn't happen right away. What happened was, the purple tang we had in there suddenly just snapped and started wailing on this yellow tang specifically, and constantly. This fish was never an issue in the past, but something just switched in his little fish brain, and suddenly he had huge beef with this yellow tang. So we had to get both of them separated ASAP. There weren't any other tanks to put him in that we could guarantee the same thing wouldn't happen again due to the presence of tangs that have already had aggression issues in the past or tangs that could possibly snap like the purple tang did. So he's in my tank now. The tang has definitely been earning his keep in the tank by keeping algae under control. The fox face helps a bit in that regard sometimes, but this tank definitely misses having a tang in it to help with hair algae along the back wall. All right, now on the coral side of rescue things, the main newbies you may have already noticed have been these three acanthophilia. These were in rough shape when we added them to the tank. We've actually purchased these from a wholesaler in this condition, knowing it would be a bit of a struggle to revive them. We figured that we could nurse them back to life, so we turned my tank into an acanthophilia rescue of sorts. You may have caught a glimpse of the neon orange acanthophilia in my last video, but these other two are brand new additions. The reasoning behind using my tank as a rehab center is because acanthophilia tend to take up a lot more real estate than other corals in our farming systems, which is where they were before. If we aren't selling them at the moment, it really doesn't make much sense for us to have these sitting in a farming tank where there could easily be an entire tray of frags sitting in the same spot. So why my tank and not one of the other show tanks? Well, for starters, a majority of our show tanks are very species specific. It wouldn't really make sense to add them to our Euphilia slash Vimbrophilia show tank or our Bubble Tip Anemone show tank. They would just look really out of place. Same scenario with our SPS show tank. So that leaves our large peninsula mixed reef show tank. And there's a couple of reasons why these wouldn't work out in that tank either. First, I don't know if you can tell, but this tank is absolutely massive, and massive tanks need massive amounts of flow power to reach each corner of the tank. For instance, this tank is sporting an Abyss Flow Cannon, which kicks out a lot of power, and depending on where you house these acanthophilia, it could easily be too much flow that could make the flesh on the corals rub against the skeleton, causing it to recede, or even get punctured, which would kind of negate the whole rescue aspect of this. Even if we did find a spot in the peninsula tank with lower flow, it still wouldn't be safe. Why? I'll tell you. This fat flamingi tang developed a taste for some random meaty LPS corals for some reason. He's the main reason why there aren't any Duncans or Australophilia in this tank. It is very uncommon for a tang to eat corals, but uncommon does not mean never. He will gladly make a meal out of them, and he'll do the same to these acanthophilia if given a chance. So after all that, my tank seems like the perfect place for rehab to take place. I hope they recover and are fit enough to be sold, but for right now, I'm really glad to have them as centerpiece corals, even if they do look a little sad right now. Now, speaking of Duncans, just to backtrack a little, I originally added two small frags of them into this tank right when I started, and they have grown really nicely. These aren't rescues, but they are a little smaller looking than they used to be. And I think it has to do with the flow. Recently, we switched out my undersized CJ pumps for some AI Nero pumps. 
in fairness to CJ, the pumps installed initially were horribly undersized for the tank that we were using them in. They were originally meant for super small quarantine tanks or something like that, and they ended up in this tank. Eventually, we were planning on upgrading them, but they stuck around for a good year or so due to miscellaneous stocking issues. Finally, we got around to getting appropriately sized power heads in this tank, and while the overall flow improved and helping out some other corals, it did cause these Duncans to close down ever so slightly to compensate. So, such is life, I guess. Alright guys, that's it for this little tank update. I'll hopefully be back soon with more tank updates, but until next time, happy reefing.